sports shirts have just been around and been like the performance model forever, and now they're being overlooked. That's that 200 horsepower ZX14. He's never had to take on 883 cc's of fury. So slow. Where the dip is. 23 horse? I'm gonna put enough nitrous on that sports shirt to euthanize a small town, is what I'm going to do. You're nitrous it? Oh yeah, lots, oh, okay. lots. <laughs>
They open and then when it slows down, they all fall back away. Pearl bath. We need to determine what spring pressure we want. We can run a lot lighter because we have a lockup applying like the real pressure, but we have a handful of different spring pressures. I'm gonna actually, I'm, I'm just gonna guess. I'm gonna go a little on the light side. I'm gonna mix the 40 pound springs, 58 pound springs, I'm just gonna go every other one. What are the chances I can get these started? That's what I was worried about, okay. We just got our heads back from the machine shop. We had a little bit of a problem with one of them. It wasn't perfectly flat. And with uh, the nitrous going on there, I was a little worried about that. So we sent them down the street to uh, our local machine shop, RPM. They did a great job. They cleaned these up for us. And now they are nice and flat. And we have the big dog uh, fueling valve springs in here with their hot rod retainers. So now that the, the heads are nice and fresh, go ahead and we're gonna throw them on the bike and hope for the best. We're gonna add these roller rockers from SNS. Rather than just the standard cast rocker with the metal rubbing on the top of the valve, it has this nice little roller here that'll allow things to move a lot freer and when they're moving a lot faster, have less friction on them. I don't know where else I'd put them because the bottle's gonna be here. This line will go to the bottle. And basically I'll have these nitrous solenoids here, 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag, or at this, this point, like a three and a half pound bag. But these fogger nozzles, I wanna get right in the manifold. So they're pointing into the intake valve. So I need to get two of them in there, basically in here, like this right here. Going into the nitrous part of the build, it's a little bit of problem solving as far as where you're gonna put everything. You just have so much componentry to put on this little bike. And you know, Harleys in general are kind of naked looking bikes for the most part, especially Sportsters. There's not a lot of places to tuck stuff away. And so we have a fair amount of electronics with a nitrous controller and the solenoids and a fuel pump. And we have to find places to mount all that stuff. And hopefully that's it's A, safe, and B, it doesn't look like a total mess. So we're going back with the tried and true VNH short shots. We just want to get fuel and air in and out as fast as we can. We're going to dance with uh, who brung us to the Hoot Nanny. What happened was I didn't finish my adjustment on the first push rod, we got busy, we were doing some stuff. And so basically the front push rod was way too loose, 
rather have that than too tight. Redid the push rod adjustment real quick and fires and runs, it sounds much better. fairly well versed in nitrous on motorcycles. I've done it quite a few times, just uh, not a lot with Harley, as, as odd as that may seem. I made my own little uh, wiring diagram there, which makes it seem way simpler than it actually is. So now all that's left to do is to take all of this and make it look like this. I probably could have made this much easier on myself by using half the amount of nitrous, because then I wouldn't have used the progressive controller, but why it'd be easy when you can spray twice the amount of nitrous. So I built a little bracket on the side of the bike to hang everything on. You've just got so much stuff with uh, the motor mount, the manifold, and the cylinders being in there tight, getting everything in there. It's kind of a pain. And of course, we have the arming switch of doom up here. I didn't want to uh, like wire some weird button up there, so I opened up the switch housings, and our spray button is actually the turn signal button for the right-hand turn signal. So if somebody on the road gets this bike and goes to make a right-hand turn, and they get surprised. Why aren't we? Come on, fill up. There we go. You know, we really concentrated on the motor build and the nitrous build, but there was some surrounding accoutrements, let's say, that we did do to this bike as well. I mean, some were very necessary, some were kind of just more aesthetic choices or whatever. Put a chain drive on the bike, couldn't really trust the belt. We don't know where we're gonna be with gearing, but the chain drive is going to allow us to a, get strength, and B, adjust our gearing. Some of the other things we did was just the lighting. I just wanted to make it look a little cooler. LED headlight from Electric and LED taillight from Electric. A nice smoke laydown unit. Looks real slick in there. I mean, just kind of makes it look a little bit more racy. And then on the front, I actually put a Memphis Shades gauntlet fairing on there. Kind of helps me hide some of my wiring and the, the arming switch and the shift light we're gonna use is up there. And then again, something that was kind of really necessary, we got rid of the forward controls, put mid controls on it, much more uh, conducive to drag racing. So we're using a SNS E on this, which is like the quintessential like straight line speed OG carburetor. For your suspension, it's actually pretty important to our build. You don't want your ride height to be very high. Most of the time drag, drag bikes are very, very low. Well, we ran into some problems. Any shock that we could get where it really lowered the bike down to the ride height I would like didn't have the adjustability we needed. We needed uh, compression and rebound adjustability. So I had to make a choice, go with a really short shock that I couldn't adjust at all, or go with a taller shock that I had a lot of adjustment with. So we have some Fox RC1s, very, very adjustable shock. And we're gonna use this LA Choppers lowering link, which is essentially gonna lower this bike. So we're putting the taller shock on, which raised it up, but then we're lowering it back down with the lowering kit. Yeah, buddy. This will be exciting if nothing breaks. We need to do some testing on the nitrous kit, make sure our solenoids are activating, things like that, our fuel pump's running, and then from there, we can get this thing to the dyno and uh, get it dialed in. Bottle pressure a little low, but I think we just go with it for now.